supernaturally impacting souls. Somebody say supernatural impact on souls. Hallelujah. Whatever we do, be it in this house or online, which is the same thing really, it must be unto impacting souls. In every service, souls must be impacted. Say souls. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He came to do what? To seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. So souls is the main focus. Say it's the main focus. Say it's the main assignment. So a church must be about souls. It must be about what? All right. So Jesus came to seek and save the lost. The lost are uh, uh, souls are the primary business, the core business of ministry. If deliverance is not unto soul encouragement, is not unto soul establishment, is not unto helping souls, it is not deliverance, it is a show. It is a show. So we don't do shows here. We do souls here. Amen. So what we do should impact who? Should impact who? Say souls must be impacted. Lift up your right hand. Say, Father, help me so my life supernaturally, positively impacts souls. Help me, Lord. I need to impact souls in the name of Jesus. Everything I do, everywhere I go, souls must be impacted in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? All right. Now, when you come to a ministry, there are things you must expect. Somebody say expectation. Zechariah 8 verse 23. People must follow you to God's house. People must what? Follow you to, to God's house. Why? Because they must see results. Can somebody say results? Say it again. Say, I want to see results. So, people follow results. People follow results. That says the Lord of hosts. In those, ten, in those days, ten men from every language of the nation shall grasp onto a KPM member saying, let us go with you. Why? For we have heard and we have seen that God is with you evangelism, the most effective evangelism is evangelism by results. Say with me evangelism by results. I release that grace upon your life. May your life be an evangelical tool. I said may you evangelize with the results in your life. May people see positively that there are results in your life and may those results desire, cause people to desire to follow you. Say people will follow me. I will have results. Say father, Cause results upon my life. Results that make people desire to follow me. Now, when people see results, the next thing they ask is, how did you get this? Are you here? It's easier when people ask you, ask you how you got something for you to explain and to teach it. Say results. Talk to me. Say results. I decree over your life, every single facet of your life, there must be results. I prophesy uncommon results in your life. Results that will cause people to desire your God. Results that will cause people to look for your God in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, give me results. Micah. He says, now it shall come to pass in the latter days. I mean, believe we're in the latter days, the last of the last days. That the mountain of the Lord's house. Now, the church or the, the house of God is considered to be like a mountain. Somebody say a mountain. Say it again. Say a mountain. Right? The mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above other hills. Right? So we want to establish God's house. We want to establish people in God's house. I want you established. Established means that you are not. You see, I was just kia kia. Your life must be established. 
I decree your life must be settled in the blessing. I said you, you, you must be established on top of other mountains. That means the people in God's house must rise above people who are not in God's house. He said on top of other mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Why? And the people shall flow to it. Can you imagine? You are on a mountain, but people flow to a mountain. That is supernatural. Flowing should be downwards. You will not go with the crowd, but the crowd will go with you. I said people will flow to you. People will flow to you. Why? Because you are rising above them in the name of Jesus. I release that grace over your life. You are rising above unbelievers. May you rise above unbelievers so that you can evangelize to unbelievers. May your life be a message. This scripture is so powerful. Next verse. Many nations shall come and say, come, let us go to the mountain. You see that? All ethnicities, every race must come. They will say, let us go to the church because of results. I said, people must flow in your direction by reason of results. When they see how you dress, when they see how you drive, when they see how comfortable you are, when they see your house on Google Maps, when they see your business on Facebook, when they see supernatural results, they must say, let us go with you. A church that is not growing is a church that is not prospering. We need prosperity in your life. We need you to point your business and say, look at what the Lord has done. Come with me. Come with me. Come to my church. How did you get? We are good church. Let us go to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. A specific God. Not just a God. The God of Jacob. That means they must have seen something in the life of Jacob. Look at this. He will teach us his ways that have caused these waves. He will teach us his ways. He will teach us his ways. When you have results, it's an opportunity for teaching. I declare and I decree. May people desire the clips. Uh, when you have results, it's easy to send people clips. Because the clips are working for you. Teach us the ways. Teach us the way. Show us the sermons. Why? We have seen results. When we saw the kind of house you are living in, we want the sermon. I want the sermon that produced this result. I want the sermon that produced this dimension. I want the sermon that gave you the grace to go and fetch a car from Zimoko paid cash. I want the grace that sent you to pick up that Land Cruiser cash from Toyota. I want that grace in the name of Jesus. Teach me, teach me. It's easy to teach when you have results. I think there's one reason why I struggled to go, go to university because all the professors I knew were struggling. I said, this does not work. I like things that work. Men of God, teach me, but show me results. And be followers of them who through faith and patience have obtained, not explained, obtained the promise. I don't want to explain the promise. Uh, I want to obtain, I want visible, tangible results. The things we've seen, the things we've heard are the things that we are handling. May you handle new dimensions in this church. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. You will handle new things and people will ask you how and you say, come. Come. Come and see. Come to prayer shift. Come for morning prayer. Come for Wednesday night uh, uh, study, hallelujah, where we learn about the ways of business, kingdom, principles. Come, come. People follow results, not grammar. People follow results. I'm addicted to results. And I'm allergic to no results. Don't tell me you're working if you're not producing results. You're not working, you're wasting my time. To the house of the to, to the house of the God of Jacob, a specific God. So it's easy to teach when you have results.
because it's proof that what you know works. You can't preach prosperity driving a funny car. Listen, anytime I upgrade a car, it's not for me. I've driven brand new cars. It's, it's also for teaching. In, the, in this economy where people are saying there's a downsetting, I will say there's an upgrade. He will teach us whose ways? His ways. He will teach us principles. He won't just say he has results. He will show us how he has the results. Man of God, teach me the how. How? The ways. There are ways. Jesus, listen, there's Jesus the way. He will show you the way. Saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. There are ancient paths that if you follow, very obvious you will get there. If I meet you in, 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 in uh, Borodo, Ma, no, no, not Borodo, Marimba there, going towards the stadium, you tell me you are going to Mutare, I will know you will not get there. So, I will tell you to make a U-turn and you make a U-turn and just go straight. Don't worry about a lot of things. Whether you see a roundabout, whatever you give way, go robot, go straight. So, there are paths that if you are led in that path, it's obvious you will be blessed. You don't receive God's blessing on your condition. No. Stop trying to create your own conditions with your friends. You've got to follow the kingdom conditions. They are kingdom conditions. Bring in the tithe. Kingdom condition. It's not your poetic doctrine. I did not write the book of Malachi. He said bring the tithe. Hello? So that is a path to financial greatness. Bring the sacrifice. It's a path to partaking of abundance. If you want small, small breakthroughs, forget about sacrifice. But if you want to partake of abundance, bring the sacrifice. Bring the sacrifice. Teaching about sacrifice does not mean I want the sacrifice from you today. I'm teaching you the way. When you are ready, you walk in the way. Because what happens is that sometimes people, because of their current financial situation, they resist the message on tithing. They resist the message on sacrifice because he's got a small, small amount. So he doesn't want to part with it. So he rejects the whole message. If I teach you, when you are ready, you bring it with understanding. Go back to my, my scripture and Michael. Are you being blessed? Alright, so there are ways. In this ministry, we will teach you the ways. We impact souls by teaching them the ways. Teaching, teaching, teaching. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. So, keys represent entering certain dimensions. So, there are places you can't enter without certain keys. Behold, I give you keys to the kingdom. Keys. I release keys keys into your life the key of david way 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 when when god shuts no one can open and when god opens no one can shut so there are keys that no witch can stop you from prospering if you use the key if you use the key the ways the ways the ways hallelujah so he will teach us his ways which means we did not know those ways do not be a worshiper of your opinion you need to learn to lay aside what you know. There is always a more excellent way. He will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path. If you see something working, follow it. Follow it. And you don't have to consult your friends who don't come to this church. I, I, I really don't I fail to understand all of that. I teach something, I show you scripture. You want to cross check with your friends. Probably if there's any babido. Yeah, they've got babblers right now, and you want to go and check with them after church. What do you think about sacrifice? Of course, you will say sacrifice to them. 
the person who finds you sacrificing on this altar has something to benefit from your wallet. After long diversion of their funds, most of them are relatives. <laughs> he says, we shall walk in his path for out results. Out of Zion shall go forth the word of, Jeru of, of the Lord from Jerusalem. There's a version that says, for out of Zion shall proceed the law. That means you become lawmakers if you walk in the ways of God for you become the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. I release that level of impact upon your life. May you rise to be the head and never the tail. May you be above only, only, only and never beneath. I speak this and I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you come to church, Romans 1 11, how I long to see you. Why? That I may impart some spiritual gift unto you. So when you come to this church, there's an impartation of something spiritual that in the end you may be established. We are looking at the end. Better is the end of a matter than the beginning. In the end, you'll be established. Why? You are receiving some spiritual gift. Some spirit. So every service, you must receive something. Receiving doesn't mean I have to lay hands on you. The Bible says as he spake, the spirit of the Lord fell on them. Ezekiel 2.2. The spirit of God is falling upon you. There's an impartation. There's a receiving. Hallelujah. That's why I wanted your hands today. His spirit entered into me as he spake unto me. Not as he laid hands. Do not be addicted to the laying on of hands. Just the speakings. Just the speaking. 6 p.m. premiere. Just the speakings. The morning prayer. Just the speaking. Midnight. Just the speaking, you are receiving something. I said, you are receiving something. Say, I receive it now. You will be established. I declare you will be established. Genesis 27, verse 16 to 17. Then Jacob, Jacob awoke from his sleep. There are people who sleep in a good church. Now, sleeping does not necessarily mean, mean putting your eyelids together on a Sunday. You could be awake, but you are asleep. That's why he says, awake you, oh you Zion. You could be in a good place and not know. You could be in a church that will help your destiny and not know. You could be fast asleep. You could be receiving impartation and asleep. You could be receiving grace and be asleep. Wake up! Jacob woke from his sleep. My prayer is you'd wake up from your sleep. Wake up from that sleep. After he woke up, surely the Lord is in this place. Can you imagine sleeping where God is present? God could be present in a certain sermon and you are thinking about your problems. May you not be asleep at destiny moments. May you not be asleep when you are being prophesied to, when a declaration is going on over your life, when something that affects your destiny is being spoken. May you not be asleep. <laughs> he says, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Yeah, yeah. You might not even know. You might be in the place, the awesome place. Next verse. You might be in the be in the awesome place and not have an awesome destiny because you do not realize that you are in the place. There is a place called there, a place of your blessing. When the word is preached to you, something happens on the inside of you. Oh, then he says, and he was afraid. Listen, when you come to this place, a fear of God must come upon you. Each kakwita of snabasa, a reverence must come upon you. Oh, he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. I declare and I decree. This place is the gate of heaven. And I prophesy over your life. You will see angels ascending and descending. Uh, ascending with your problems. Uh, descending with your breakthrough. Ascending with your issues. Uh, descending with the answer. This is the awesome place. You cannot receive from what you do not value. You cannot receive from who you don't value, who you don't reverence, who you do not honor. The biggest disease in this generation is dishonor. Dishonor has robbed this last day's generation of many great things. 
You can be educated, but with dishonor, that education will be turned to nothing. May you walk in honor. May you receive. May you see this is the awesome place. This is my place. This is my house of call. This is my place of feeding. This is my place of destiny. This is where things open up for me. I receive this awesome place. It is an awesome place. I've had so many testimonies from the awesome place. May I not short circuit the blessing simply because of my big mouth. May I be a receiver. The awesome place. The awesome place. The awesome place. In the awesome place, we give you power. Luke 10, verse 17 to 19. Behold, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy. So it doesn't matter your background. When you come to this place, I declare and I decree, you receive power over how many? All powers of the enemy. It doesn't matter if I don't know Cheragupi. It doesn't matter if I don't know Chagagupi Mshonga. I prophesy if you are receiving, you are receiving. If you are daydreaming, it's not my problem. This is the awesome place and this is the time for you to receive. I prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare and I decree. Receive power over all powers of the enemy. And I decree nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means you become spiritually bulletproof as you are in this place and become a partaker of the grace together. Philippians 1 7. May you be a partaker and not a spectator. I declare and I decree. May this ministry impact you as a soul. May it impact other people that you bring as souls. You must be a partaker and never a spectator. I said to the Holy Spirit, describe to me what KPM is. He said, it is a place of spiritual empowerment for destiny fulfillment. A place of what? Spiritual empowerment for destiny fulfillment. That power could include power over the demonic so you fulfill your destiny. That power could be power to prosper so that you fulfill your destiny. I declare and I decree in this place of spiritual empowerment for destiny fulfillment may you receive whatever power you need. I prophesy any power you need receive it. Any anointing you need receive it. Any grace you need receive it. I said receive it in the name of Jesus. May you be empowered. May you be graced. In this place, you receive power. X18. Behold, Kalabahaya. You shall receive power. After which the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In this place, you will receive the Holy Ghost. Come to our church, you will receive the Holy Ghost. And you begin to speak in tongues. Why should I have tongues? Building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Are you here, somebody? Say, Lord, give me power. Say, Lord, give me power. So in this place, we empower spiritually. Power is not just for pastors. Power is also for the saints. May you be a saint with power. Listen, why should God make power only available for pastors? As if demons only attack pastors. If you have spiritual trouble, you better find power. You better find this place. This place is an arena of power. And that power must come upon your life. Hallelujah. Stop admiring the power of the men of God and want to be a partaker. Say, I need power. Say, Lord, empower me. When I go in the marketplace, I need power. Give me power, Job. In this place, Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus. How? To the level to which God anointed Jesus with the holy ghost hello and with power so you first receive the holy ghost then you receive power x1 verse 8 then x2 i think verse 4 you become full of power there are dimensions of power ezekiel 47 the first level of power goes up to the knee level then it goes up to the waist level then it goes up to the overflowing level and on the overflow level everything that the water touches will leave 
so power is in levels and power is supposed to turn dead things back to life so in this place you receive power someone say power receive that power now i prophesy it in the name of jesus i release that power may you receive an empowerment in the name of jesus any area in your life that is lacking power receive that power i release an increasement of power in the name of jesus say lord give me power micah 3 8 truly not looking about truly i am full of power how by the holy ghost Proof of power is not people falling in church. Proof of power is people rising on the marketplace. I see you rising by this power. I said, I see you rising by this power. Uh, somebody say, I need that power. Say, Jehovah, empower me. Father, increase me. Lord, give me power over all powers of the enemy. So if you come from a wicked background, this is your church. Why? You need power. When you have power like Moses, you can walk back to Egypt. Then say, Pharaoh, I'm back. I dare you to arrest me. I dare you to arrest me. You can't try it. I had a burning bush experience. You can't arrest me. I declare and I decree. As you go back to the world to evangelize, I declare and I decree you are going with power. He said, I will send you back to Egypt as a God. Exodus 7 verse 1. You are going back as a God. You are going back with power. I release that grace upon your life. Remember, the Spirit comes on you as I speak unto you. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3. In the day of his power, what shall happen? The people shall be willing. The people shall be volunteers. People will volunteer to help you. Why? Power. When people see, see power, fear comes upon them. Oh, this thing of I've got no favor, it's, it means you have no power. When people see power, they will volunteer resources. I prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus. As you are receiving power, as you are receiving power, people must be willing to help you. Why do people consult the occult on bended knees? Why? Because they know on the marketplace you need power. You need power. You, you can't just go fair, fair, any education some of you have tried it <laughs> you'll be surprised with that certificate there are unemployed graduates there are people who are unemployed and they have masters why they have masters but they have not mastered power may you not just have a certificate some trust in chariots some trust in horses but we trust in the name of the lord for the name of the lord is a strong power that name of the lord commands power i decree in this ministry as you come you receive your personal power personal anointing you can change the course of a board meeting by yourself you say that's fine if you go no further will you go you can determine some things hallelujah when you have power you're not a beggar powerlessness will initiate you into beggarship but when you have power, the people must be willing. People must volunteer. I said people must be volunteers. I decree as you come to this place, part of the soul impact is you are receiving power. The anointing, the increasing. May you receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Never again will it be said you are powerless. Never again will it be said it's only your men of God with power. I said, may you receive power in the name of Jesus. Shall power, shall power. In the book of John, chapter number 20, verse 21 to 23, the Bible says, and Jesus came where they were. And the Bible says he breathed on them. And when he breathed on them, he said what receive ye the what the power of the holy ghost so you can receive power by the holy ghost just breathing on you through an anointed vessel even if you were unto usher you might not be able to usher why because power is released upon you just by the what the breath God, a breath, receive power.
power. Job said, that breath has made me. So your breakthrough could be in that breath. The spirit of the Lord has made me. The breath of the Almighty has given me what? Has given me what? The breath. So when you come to the house of God, expect the breath of God. The breath of God. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe up. See, that, that's where all these, all these songs came from. All these songs came from there. This is a spiritual church. Are you listening to me? Even when we are in marketplace mentorship, there is a breath, a breath of marketplace breakthroughs being breathed upon you. Hallelujah. Come expected. Hallelujah. Kaya to bakota bahaya. The enemy hates us, my church, anywhere because he knows what the breath of God can do. He knows that if he breathes on you, you are now wind assisted. Ayatabahaya. May you be assisted by the breath of God. Uh, may that breath give you speed, give your business speed this week. This week, this week, this week, this week, this week. This week you become a high flyer. This week, what was not working must work. This week I prophesy it. I release that breath. Say, Holy Ghost, breathe upon me. Say, Holy Ghost, breathe upon me. Jesus breathed on Peter's business after Peter partnered with Jesus. Look at what happened. Peter caught a great multitude of fish. One catch, one transaction plus the breath of God equals to one year's results. One transaction plus the breath of God equals to one year transactions put together. I prophesy that one transaction this week a major, 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 major transaction. And people will say, I'm still regular. How many want an Azizega kind of breakthrough? I release it upon you if you receive. Your house must command an explanation. Could I see I've seen no more leaves. I've seen no more leaves. In this church as part of soul impact, abnormal breakthroughs. Abnormal breakthroughs. Abnormal load. Abnormal is abnormal load. I release the abnormal load kind of breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Motanga abnormal load, it needs police escort. The kind of breakthrough coming to you, you need escort. Shout, I receive it. Shout, I receive it. Matthew 25, verse 6 to 9. Please be seated. The Bible was speaking there about the oil, the ten virgins. Thank you. The ten virgins. And some of them, the oil was running out. Though you are a virgin, you better have oil. Virginity without oil will not pay you. Anywho. <laughs> Moving right on. <laughs> the Bible says there, that there were virgins whose oil was running out. You can go and read it. And then they said to the others, can you give us some of your oil? And they said, no, we cannot give you some of our oil. Go and get your own oil. In this ministry, we'll teach you how to go and get the anointing. Thank God the man of God is anointed. But you must go and get your own anointing. The wise answered and said, No, lest there be not enough for us and you, but rather go to those who sell and do what? Buy for yourself. That's what this ministry is about. Buying for yourself. Buying what? For yourself. But watch this. The Bible says, 
They were told to go and buy for themselves. And yet the same Bible says in the book of Acts, there's a man who was punished for trying to buy the anointing with money. That's why Isaiah says, I think it's Isaiah 55, Oh ye, come and buy without money. The anointing is not bought with money. The anointing is bought without money. Imagine, this is the money prophet saying the anointing is bought without money. So if I don't use money to buy the anointing, what do I use? What do I use? There's a cost. One cost is hunger. If you are not hungry, you can't buy the anointing. You need to be hungry for the anointing. Blessed are they that hunger. Here's the next one. And thirst. Hunger and thirst for the anointing. Desire more of the anointing. Say, I want more of the anointing. Say, I want more of the anointing. In this church, we will teach you how to be thirsty for God. How to be hungry for God. Say, I want more. Say, I want more. He says, eat for the journey is long. Eat some more. That's why we keep feeding you and keep feeding you. But we can't keep feeding you if you are not hungry. May you pray for a deeper level of hunger. May you be hungry for more of God. Say, Lord, I want more. Say, Lord, I want more. When you think you've received enough, the Lord releases more. More capacity. More capacity. More. Receive the grace to receive more. Receive the grace to receive more. The grace to want more. The grace of being dissatisfied with where you are. May you desire more. The book in the, uh, the, the the church in the book of Acts, they met, they met daily. Why? They were hungry. They were hungry. Hey, no, no matter Tuesday morning, Wednesday evening, Friday morning, more. We need more. Eat some more. For the journey is far i can't get to where i want to get to with 20 dollars or fewer i'm gonna need some more say lord give me more say lord put more on me but look this is what he said matthew 25 he said but rather go to them that sell to them that sell and buy there are those who are custodians those who are entrusted with the power you can't get power from someone with no power you can't buy zesa from someone who has no zesa even for them to give you the token they have to have power themselves yeah, 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 yeah. in every territory they are authorized dealers the authorized dealers are endorsed by the head office you will see that no these ones ah, they, they were sent to release the power by zesa there must be a zesa emblem there they must be known by zesa they must be endorsed by zesa there are people who god has endorsed people who carry power not people who talk about power and he says go to them that sell and buy how do I buy power from a man of God? I must be hungry, number one. I must be thirsty, number two. I must follow. You pay, not with money, with the price of followership. You pay by following. Pay by following. Follow online. Follow the teachings. Follow the service. Follow the instructions. It's all part of following. So as you follow, you are buying. Are you getting this thing? So you follow by hunger. In fact, you, you, you buy anointing with hunger, with thirst, with following. Say, I will follow. Say, I will follow. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I, as I follow Christ. Say, I will follow. Say it again. Say, I will follow. There it is. First Corinthians, thank you to me. 11 verse 1. But follow me as I am also following Christ. And then in Matthew, he says, follow me. Matthew 4 verse 19. And I will make you. You can't make yourself. All the proud people fail to say amen. <laughs> you can't make yourself. 
There's a rule in the realm of the spirit that says you have to be invited into new realms. You can't invite yourself. Are you getting this thing? Say, I will follow. So I can be made. So if you try and make yourself, you are slowing things down. Once you follow, I will make. I will shape. I will mold. I will push. I will push you until you make it worse. Follow me and I will make you. Say, I will make it by following. So following is a price. Why? You are foregoing other, following others and following this one. So you make it by following. Say, I will follow. When you follow, follow with your whole heart. Genuine followership equals to replication of grace. There are people who faked following in the Bible. Can I give you one? Gehazi. How do we know Gehazi was faking it? How do we know? Because in 2 Kings chapter number 4, the Shunammite's child died. Elisha said, here's my mantle. Go and heal. Go, go and raise the boy back to life. The, he was expecting him to come back with results. He, he could not do it. And then the man of God says, ah, bring my mantle. He went and he did it himself. How do I know you are not following genuinely? You cannot replicate. If you cannot replicate, check your followership. If your child is sick, you lay hands, they are still sick. Check your followership. Check your heart. If you follow, you should replicate. If you follow, you should. Joshua was not involved in church politics with Moses. That's why when the anointing was passed down, it stuck. I can attempt to pass the anointing, but if you do not stick, if your heart is wrong. So, Gehazi failed to do a miracle he was expected to do. There are levels I expect that by now, you should have been on. But by reason of wrong positioning, huh, or incomplete followership, you are not there correct this. That's 2 Kings chapter 4. Then we see in 2 Kings chapter number 5 when there was the whole Naaman episode. Why Gehazi failed to duplicate the anointing? Because he was following for money. He wanted things. He didn't want grace. So he collected things from Naaman. If your heart is for money, I'm telling you the anointing will not flow. And if you cannot be trusted with mammon, who will entrust to you the true riches? So there are riches beyond money. What is the true riches? Genuine anointing. That's why I don't trust anyone who, who doesn't give. You're already a thief. If you give you anointing, you go and merchandise it. Commercialize the grace. <laughs> so Gehazi, hello, in chapter 4 could not produce a miracle. And we see the reason in chapter 5 is because all he wanted was things. And it was my heart not with you. You know, I laugh when people receive breakthroughs and they don't bring the tithe. I, I love because I was there <laughs> okay okay you believe I'm not there but you dream about me <laughs> and was my and was my heart did my heart not go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you is it time to receive money never receive money before time what was he saying? He was saying, yes, Gehazi, you are still a man of God in training. You don't yet have what is called a spiritual mitre. What is a spiritual mitre? It is a spiritual empowerment that authorizes you to eat cursed monies. 
How no any envelope yako? And do you know prayer request? Huh? Are those not cases? Who do you bring them to? To me. You've written poverty on your envelope. And I chow the poverty. But the poverty does not enter me. That is a spiritual matter. Is it time, Gehaza? Go I said, Akwana. When someone brings a prayer request of marital problems and you eat that money as a man of God without a mitre, get ready for divorce. Okay, you don't believe what I'm saying. So let me take it from the Bible. And the, and the leprosy of Naaman. So, so the offering of Naaman was carrying the leprosy and let it fall upon you and your children. I wish he had ended up upon you and your children so this kind of love of money the curse will fall upon you and your children may you not be Naaman may you not be Gehazi any case of leprosy that has fallen upon you by reason of being wrongly positioned I remove that case in the name of Jesus May you be here for the right reasons. May you be a son that wants to push the agenda. Not just here to collect things in the name of Jesus. Where are we? Go to them that sell and buy. Hunger. Thirst. Following. This one. Honor. Honor. If you want to follow, follow with honor. Many people honor publicly and dishonor privately. It is the things you say in your house that really count about the person you are following. Refuse discussions of dishonor in your house. You are teaching your children dishonor. You are teaching them how to perfect dishonor. You are teaching them how to fail in life. At least if you've decided to dishonor you and your husband, do it in your bedroom. Don't teach it to the next generation. Because children are like sponges, they will receive it. I've seen sometimes, you know, <laughs> maybe someone leaves the church, they've got a problem with me or whatever it is. No problem. When we meet them and their children, you can see the attitude on the children as well. <laughs> How old is the child? 11 years. Giving anointing attitude. He learned it from the mother. He learned it from the father. Big mouth. You have just killed the next generation. There are issues that you should not pass on to your children. Never, never, never allow dishonor to be verbalized. The Bible says do not kiss a king. A king means a person in authority because birds would take what you say. Hello, from your bedroom. Is there a bed by your bedroom? You know, 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 you of God. know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, don't focus on the humanity. Focus on the divinity. Are you getting it? So the devil in an attempt to rob you of destiny, he makes you focus on the humanity. You magnify it. Until it looks like there's no God in the man. Elisha followed Elijah, a very temperous man. Nangani hasha. Nangani hasha. Don't mess with me, I'll bring fire down from heaven. <laughs> Hello? So it is patience with the anointed that gets you to receive the gold. Many wealthy people are already angry anyway. Pressure. Pressure in our room sorrow is too much. So they will not talk to you like their friends. They don't have, they don't have the time that your friends have. I, and I just think yet the Bible says the rich answer is roughly. God was already warning you to never He was preparing you. Are you getting this thing? So this thing of expecting your boss to talk to you like your friend. No. Your expectations are wrong. 
So, how, how, what, what price do you pay to, to receive the anointing? Hunger. Two. Thirst. Three. Following. Four. Honor. I'll give you number five. Number five is genuine service. Genuine service. An anointing you do not serve will not flow fully to you. Serving means you are pushing that man's agenda ahead of yours. That is service. The Bible says Elisha poured hands on the pour, poured water on the hands of Elijah. Is it that Elijah could not wash his own hands? There are things that the man of God can do for himself, but you must find the pleasure in doing them for him so you can receive the anointing. Are you getting it? This is very, very important. Aaron and her were lifting up the hands of the anointed. Was Aaron not given the priesthood? Why? He could not have received that priesthood without serving. Sometimes the man of God just needs encouragement. May you not be those who pull down the hands of the man of God. May you be the ones that lift up the hands of the man of God. And it is two hands that were lifted. Some lift spiritually. Some lift financially. Are you getting it? It's not that certain things the man of God cannot pay for them. You just pay. Say, sir, there are many sons, but few servants. I'm a son. I'm a son. <laughs> okay, no problem. Why is the sonship not working? Sonship without service doesn't work. It's there in Malachi 3. The distinction is, 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 is found on a son who serves. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On that day, I will make them my jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves. Not who comes to church. Who serves? Say a son who serves. I want to be a son who serves. Yeah, no, never mind with the daughter. Son, son, son. The king with the son. <laughs> we are all sons of God. Go, go and complain about that one in the Bible. Why are they not daughters of God? We are all what? Sons of God. Even you, a woman. There's a man in that woman. M -A. The last three is men. You are still a man. If we look for your source, you came out of a man, Adam. So that makes you a man anyway. It's just that you're a woo man. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm a son who serves. Say, I'm a son who serves. We serve in the kingdom by bringing resources and people. People and resources. That's how we serve in the kingdom. May you be a son who serves. Now, if you're a son who serves, you are God's jewel and he will spare you. You see that? Somebody say, I want to be a jewel of God, so I will serve. So you don't pray for jewelryship in the kingdom. <laughs> you serve your way into being a jewel. The Lord said to me, many, many prayer points that people have are things that they will receive if they serve. If the whole year passes, you have not brought one person to church, why should God bless you? Please. This is not rhetoric. I need an answer from you. See? No answer. Your father's agenda is souls. You have not brought one soul to church the whole year. You are praying to your father you are not serving. Correction. Psalm 89. Can I show you a new revelation I received? Say, I will serve. Talk to me. Say, I will serve. Say, Father, help me to serve. Alright? So, if you, if you came to church today and you did, you didn't bring someone to church, shame. You didn't serve. You had a whole week to bring one person. If you are arranging a braai on a Saturday, you can even think about it on Saturday morning. There will be 45 people you will compel them. You will phone them. You will even arrange transport. Why? It matters to you. So if you have seven days to bring someone to church and you do not do it, 
it's only because it does not matter to you. When what matters to God begins to matter to me, my life will matter. Psalm 89. And I have found I have found who? Why did he say I found David? Because he, he found David before he found the servant in David. Graduate from being David to being my servant David. There's a my, my, which means God must own you. If God can own you, you are his servant and with his holy oil, not olive oil, I have anointed him. Anointing is for servants, not church goers. The more you serve, the more you are anointed. The more you serve, the more you are anointed. Are you receiving this? Lift up your right hand. Say, Father, help me to serve better so I can be more anointed. I realize deficiency of anointing in my life is proof of insufficient service. Raise your hand. Pray that prayer. Lord, help me. Help me to serve. Help me to serve. Give me the grace to serve. I want to serve you going forward. I want to be a son who serves. Not a son who's just a son, but a son who serves. Hallelujah. If you come to this house of God, what do we do? Healing and deliverance. Say healing. Let's say healing. Acts 19.11 Unusual miracles are a part of this ministry. And God wrote what? Unusual miracles by the hand of the apostles. Say unusual miracles. It was apostles' hands, but it was God working with these hands. In this ministry, we will teach you how to work with God. How to work with God. We are co-laborers with Christ. Not good. Christ works for me. Jesus is not your errand boy. God worked unusual miracles. But Paul's hands were there. Your hands must be there. Your hands must be there. So God does not do miracles independent of the hands of men. That's not how he works. He wants you there. Do you know someone will not even be saved minus you in that person's house? You need to be there, sent by God to cause people to be saved. I prophesy on the marketplace, as you show up, people must be saved. I said people must be saved. Destinies must be rescued because people must be saved because you are there. Alright? Somebody say miracles. Say it again. Say miracles. Isaiah 33 verse 24. So these are the things that people who we bring to this church must expect. Expect miracles. You are sick? Come to church. Come to church. God will heal you. God uses our men of God in an unusual way. Hello? It's not false advertising. Genuine, non-staged miracles happen here. Isaiah 33 verse 24. And the, and the inhabitants will not say, I am sick. You see that? In this place, no one shall say, I am sick. Your amen is tired. I said, in this place, no one will say I am sick. As you walk into this auditorium, I declare and I decree, you are completed your total healing in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, receive your healing now. Even if you came here sick, receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word. Right where you are sitting there, I send the word of God and I command healing of all diseases. I prophesy healing in the name of Jesus. Whether it's a headache, backache, any pain in your body, in your stomach, on your back, on, on your limbs, wherever the pain is, I prophesy absolute total healing in the name of Jesus. Receive that healing now. I said receive that healing now. Be healed and made whole. Miracles of healing are not for the Bible times. They are even for now. I prophesy even if there's a sick one who is in hospital, a loved one, I command and I demand their healing in the name of Jesus. I prophesy total, 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 total and absolute healing in the name of Jesus. Receive that healing in the name of Jesus. 
I release that grace, that power. How God anointed me to heal. So I release that healing. I'm anointed to heal and I release the healing. I command the healing. I demand it and I speak it in the name of Jesus. No sickness, no disease will survive this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. I call, if it is a foul spirit, spirit of infirmity, get out. You foul spirit, get out. Loose and let go in the name of Jesus. If it is a long-term sickness, there's a demon attached to it. And I command that demon, get out in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. Foul spirit, go in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. He sent his word and did what? He, one person, sent his word and healed them. One word can heal them. You don't need a one-on-one. -on -one. One word can heal them. There was no laying on of hands there. One word. He released the word and the word healed a lot of people and delivered them from their destruction. It's another dimension of this ministry. We deliver people from destruction. You will not be destroyed under this ministry. You, uh, you need to say amen and receive these things. I said you will not be destroyed under this ministration. I said you are disaster proof in the name of Jesus. I said you will not be destroyed. No more destruction coming upon you. I speak this and I prophesy. Any pending destruction over your life, it will not work. I declare and I decree you will not be destroyed. I prophesy you will not be destroyed. I declare it you will not be destroyed. No matter how much the enemy has planned, you will not be destroyed. Destruction shall be far from you in the name of Jesus. I said you will not be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In this ministry, we release impartations. Say impartations. That's Romans 1 11. Impartations. But look at this. I want to pick it up from Exodus 31, verse 1 to 4. So impartation is not just so that you can stand here and pray very powerful prayers like Joshua. Thank God for that. But there's other dimensions. Alright? He says, then the Lord spoke to Moses, this on a Wednesday, saying, what did he say to Moses for Wednesday? See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uriah, the son of Her, of the tribe of Judah. Next verse. He says, and I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Say marketplace. Say marketplace. So in this ministry, we have a marketplace mentorship, which is unto impartation on wednesday night so we mentor you we teach you how to profit isaiah 48 verse 17 not only do we teach you how to profit we also impart the grace and the power and the anointing for all manner of workmanship whether you're a doctor you're a lawyer you're in construction you're in energy whatever industry mining farming whatever industry you are in that is all manner of workmanship Say all men of workmanship. So he, 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 he called him by name and he anointed him for all manner of workmanship. So even on those Wednesday services, you need to also not only receive information, but also receive impartation. Say impartation. Say it again. Say impartation. Say, Father, I receive the impartation. And remember, you don't receive the anointing on your own terms. Hallelujah. So part of the mentorship will be to shape your character. I know your neighbor loves your character. But me, I will mold your character. We're talking about impact on souls. In this ministry, there's genuine spiritual shepherding. Shepherding watching over the flock jeremiah 3 verse 15 and 16 he says i'll give you shepherds according to my heart not according to your friend's suggestions according to my heart in other words according to what is in my heart according to the destiny god has placed in you so god gives you a pastor according to destiny according to what destiny then he puts the destiny word inside that pastor can i get an amen I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you, not tell you what you like, feed you with knowledge and 
understanding. How many are receiving understanding and knowledge today? That's the purpose of a pastor. What will happen next? Verse 16. Then it shall come to pass, say this out. When you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days. Ah! So it leads to multiplication. The knowledge must be knowledge I can execute. Teaching must be practical, not theoretical. So in this ministry, we will teach you and there must be results you must multiply. In this ministry, we release material help, clothes, food, money, Hello? It's part of the ministration. So sometimes you see me giving out money here. I'm not being nice. I'm ministering. It's part of the ministration. Acts 4, verse 34 to 35. They distributed things there. Hallelujah. And as a ministry, we will do more of that. But we will not do only that. Hello? Because there are people who come for only that. No. Come and receive the word. Grow among the saints. Then get your own inheritance. You will never prosper by begging. Never. Never. You prosper by empowerment. No. I want you to have a mindset of a more excellent way. Hallelujah. You might start low where you need help. That's fine. But you should not end there. Can I get an amen? In this ministry, we release spiritual empowerment. I've, re I've done that already. Luke 10, verse 17 to 19. In this ministry, divine direction we will show you the way you should go. Isaiah 30, verse 21. This is the way. Walk in it. Will give you the right direction. Somebody say the right direction. Say, Father, I need the right direction. As part of impacting souls at KPM prayer shift, prophecy. Prophecy is released. Amos 3 verse 7. The Lord does nothing unless he reveals it to his prophets. So there's prophecy of revelation. I am seeing a house in Borodale for Mahaji. Revelation. Hello? Before he thought of it, it was revealed. That was not the end of the prophecy. Then we prophesied him into it. What is to prophesy him into it? To summon the resources. So there's prophecy that summon. I is a poem and utter irreality. Hello? Hello? I prophesied, I saw it. Then I prophesied him and his family into it. How? By summoning resources, opportunities. We even spiritually negotiated the price of the house. Sealed the deal. Can I get an amen? That is prophecy. So prophecy does not only reveal, but it must also summon. And then we also prophesied against witches. That way, against the house. It's all part of prophecy. Say prophecy. Say it again. Say prophecy. Say, Lord, reveal. Lord, summon. Lord, by prophecy, activate. So prophecy here also alters altars to shift things to alter destinies i see your life being altered here in the positive i said may your life be altered in the positive in the name of jesus in this ministry we do what is called spiritual rescuing of souls from the evil backgrounds so it could be somebody that you know has a very evil background they are surrounded by witches bring them to this ministry who will rescue them from that evil background. A man's enemies are those from his household. Matthew 10 verse 36. So we rescue people from evil relatives. That is to tell you any relative who has a problem with this church is a problem with your destiny. 
Why? We are praying. Why are they uncomfortable if they are straight? Isaiah 49, 24 to 26. Shall the captives of the mighty be delivered? The answer is yes. I see you delivered. May you be delivered from strong enemies from your background in the name of Jesus. May you be delivered from mighty negative enemies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In this ministry, we will help you to destiny focus. To zone in on things that matter. Destiny focus. Somebody say destiny focus. One thing I do, Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14. Forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. So we, we, we push you to focus on the future. Lift up your right hand. Say, I will focus on the future. Say, the future is better than the past and much better than the present. Father, help me to focus on the future. The grace to focus on the future in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This ministry is known, the next one, for change of story change of story when the lord turned around our captivity psalm 126 we were like them that dreamed your dreams would turn to reality someone say a change of story say it again say a change of story i prophesy over your life psalm 126 may god turn around your situation may god change your story under this ministration in the name of jesus the story of your father will not be your story the story of your mother will not be your story your life shall be bigger and better in the name of jesus shout lord change my story say jehovah change my story in the name of jesus under this ministration expect a jabez encounter a Jabez encounter. Oh Lord God, that you bless me indeed. First Chronicles 4 verse 10. And enlarge my territory. So these are the things you must expect. Your territory must be enlarged. Your transport arrangements must be changed. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy it as it is part of this ministry. Your territory must be enlarged. Your story must change. I release a story changing grace in the name of Jesus. First Samuel 10. A man they called Saul. His story changed when he met the man of God. So when you are evangelizing, come to the house of God. I want you to meet my man of God because he has a story changing grace. My story changed. This changed. That changed. I bought this land. I started to build. I did this. I did that. Is that not a change of story? So there's a story changing grace. This is how you market and evangelize the church. Hallelujah. And the story must change with you first. I said you first. I said you first. Verse 4 to 6, the Bible says that that soul was turned into another man. Verse 6, he was turned into another man. Say change of story. Say change of story. This person that we see today will not see this version of you. I prophesy and I activate a change of story in the name of Jesus. Customers that were ignoring you, you cannot be ignored anymore. Verse 4, verse 4. This week I prophesy, they will greet you and give you. They will greet you and give you. You will meet people and they will put something in your hands in the name of Jesus. This week is a week of greeting and giving. They have been greeting and greeting, but now they will greet and give. They will greet and give. I hope you receive. They will greet and give. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. What you have been waiting for? As they greet you, they will, they will give you. They will give you. 